hello friends in this video i wanted to update you guys about the new obd based gps tracker which we designed this is designed for uh, use in australia and uh, it's using a 3g module sim 5300e and uh, it's using the same gps module used in my world track v2 gps trackers so most of the parts remain the same as in my world track v2 gps tracker uh, except that we have added a external bluetooth module so this bluetooth module has having an inbuilt antenna in it and uh, it will support uh, up to four bluetooth 4.2 i guess and on the other side the main uh, highlight of this design is that it's having an obd interpreter chip so uh, this uh, obd interpreter chip uh, is from scan tools and uh, the obd part of the design is based on the uh, smartphone development kit uh, it's the obd2 uart so i'm using the same chip which is present on this board here so this is the obd chip st triple one zero and uh, most of the parts which are present on this board are all present on my board uh, except that the, i have changed the package of the lm317 part to sot package and i have added a different package of canvas transceiver and uh, instead of the soic part i used a qfn type of package here so you can see the same on this board here so this part is present here in this package and the main power input of this board is 12 volts and this device can directly derive the power from the vehicle's battery and uh, uh, that power will come from the obd port and from the obd port i am able to uh, reduce it to 5 volts first using the switching regulator and after that we are reducing the voltage further to 4 volts to power the gsu module and the other circuitry so this is the battery charger which i used in my valtrac v2 gps tracker and uh, uh, we are feeding 5 volts to this uh, charger chip it will charge the battery which is which will be connected here and parallel it will be uh, it will be powering the whole system here and uh, we have used a push push type of sim card instead of the push pull type so this is very useful when you are putting it in, inside an enclosure and you can directly uh, insert the sim card from the outside of the casing and uh, we used a bigger uh, more much more powerful microcontroller the stm32 l4 series so this is a cortex m4 processor which can run up to 80 megahertz of speed and especially in this design i needed multiple watts one for the gc module one for the gps module and one for the bluetooth and one for the obd interpreter chip so uh, because of this uh, four rewards needed i needed to go for a higher pin package on this design and the other highlight of the design is that uh, we are uh, using this different accelerometer chip compared to the world track v2 series so this is the st part which is much cheaper than uh, which i used in my world track v2 series so i will be revamping my world track v2 series gps tracker also to include this chipset it's a 16 bit accelerometer compared to the 12 bit accelerometer and this is uh, very good in, in case if you want to have the accelerometer live data and uh, because it's having 16 bit resolution it can give you much better results when you're doing vibration monitoring and stuff and here the button is just for entering the bluetooth configuration mode so there is no SOS functionality because this device will be used in a vehicle of course you can modify it to add SOS features but in this uh, version we are using it to uh, activate the bluetooth module which will be in sleep mode you know, whenever it's needed so when you want to configure the parameters of the device the parameters will be stored in this eprom chip present here so this is the one megabit eprom chip which i used in my uh, gps trackers so it's the most commonly used in most of my designs so all these parameters like the operating band of the device and uh, the ping intervals the ip address of the servers or the website address or the url or the domain names and mqtt host parameters or the protocol whatever the mqtt protocol needs all those parameters are all stored in this eprom chip so uh, to store these parameters from uh, to the eprom chip we use the bluetooth uh, device this is a very good bluetooth module it, it directly supports a transparent uh, communication on uart so uh, whatever data is enter, entered from the handset it uh, automatically comes to the uart of the microcontroller so we don't need to do any configuration for this uh, it comes in uart transparent mode by default out of the box so it is having a separate uh, pin for pairing so oh, if you press this button it will enable pairing and once the pairing is enabled you can uh, connect your device and you can do the programming and uh, other than that uh, the main use of this device will be in australia and uh, we'll be using this with the uh, optus network so, so that's why I use this sim 5300e this module supports the european 3g bands and uh, which is supported by the optus and Vodafone in uh, australia this is how the board looks so this is the first version which we did and uh, the main power supply everything is situated here and the uh, other circuits the obd part everything remains here and uh, this is the more complicated part of the circuit uh, wherein this circuit uh, 
uh, does the job of interpreting the commands that are uh, going into the vehicle's OBD port and uh, uh, it will also help in interpreting the data that is coming out of the vehicle's port. And uh, uh, this uh, CAN transceiver chip is used to convert the voltage levels uh, of the CAN bus to the levels that can be used or recognized by this uh, OBD interpreter chip. And this chip uh, is again doing the same thing for a different protocol. I think this is used as an ISO transceiver and it supports the decoding of J1850 bus. And uh, I basically used two CAN transceivers here. Uh, as you can see, this is the one that's used in the Spark Fun board and the other one. Uh, and the other one here which I used is a different one from Texas Instruments and this chip is much more expensive compared to the this chip. Uh, so that's why I made two options for adding two of the chips and I will test the both of them and uh, based on their performance I will select which one is good. And uh, this diode will help in the reverse voltage protection. So if you connect the power supply in reverse this diode will help in preventing any damage to the device for reverse connections. The SIM5300E is the smallest available in the 3G modules of SIMCOM series right now and because of this I selected this module. It supports the European 3G frequency bands uh, which is supported by the Optus and Vodafone uh, networks of Australia. So on the other side the GPS model is the same. This one gives you know, much better performance uh, compared to other GPS modules I have used. That's why I use this GPS model in almost all of my designs. And the USB port is just for uh, programming purposes. We are not charging the device into the, from the USB port. We are uh, doing that directly from the vehicle's battery here. So if the device is removed from the OBD port, then uh, this will automatically switch back to the device's backup battery and uh, it will run out of it. So this is done in case uh, to preserve the you know RTC contents of the microcontroller also. I have kept almost all the components on one side and only some part of the discrete are on are kept onto the other side. So this will also help in assembling because most of the parts will be on one side. We had to make way for two inductors because there are two switching parts here, the MP1584 for uh, bringing down the voltage uh, that's coming out to the OBD port and the battery switching regulator MP2617. Now uh, this GSM module uses uh, up to 1.8 volt I/O level, so uh, that's why we had to add this level translator for uh, supporting the what uh, I/O levels on this chip. So this uh, level translator will convert the 3.3 volts I/O levels of the microcontroller to 1.8 volts needed by the SIM5300 module. So that's all for now. Uh, I will keep you guys posted on how the development goes on. So far we are able to get all the parts working, still the OBD part is under testing. So once I have results, I will update you guys. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe.